I was totally amazed today when I was doing some of my ministry work on the internet and I came across some typical site that you know I thought oh gosh they're gonna they're gonna butcher this this article they're gonna tell some story they're going to lie and make it into something it's not and I, God always does this to me but <clears throat> About the time that I thought something was going to be a certain way, he turns it around the other way. <laughs> Just to blow my mind. Because you see, Scripture says, <clears throat> and this is something that I don't treat it as a negative quality, I treat it as a fact. But the Bible says that all men are liars and the truth is not in them. So, because they are, and that's their nature, then I expect usually what I see from men to be, quite frankly, a lie. And so I look for and pull the truth and kind of set aside the lying part because it's too easy for people to fall into their fallen nature than to fall into their godly personality. Now, that may sound cynical to some people, but for me, it's always kept me safe in order to ask God what the reality is behind any given situation that the scripture says. And he always gives me some new way regularly of looking at it. I wanted to share that with you today because it was kind of exciting. I had this new thing before we get into today's devotional, but something for you to think about. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, Everyone always tells you that, oh, well, you know, here it was, Eve got deceived, you know, and Adam was, you know, like, deceived by Eve. I don't think so. Or that Adam, you know, because whatever, you know, went after Eve and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then they always discuss all these different ways of Adam and Eve and how they either were at fault or not at fault and how they did what they did and they were acting according to whatever that person wants to make a point about. But I got a new one for you. Since Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when God asked Adam what he did, since he knew what was good and what was evil, why did he lie? You see, he had eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so he knew what was good and he knew what was evil. And he knew that he was evil for having done what he did in disobeying God. But he also knew what the good would be, and he could have chosen the good response. Think about that. The next time that you see a man, and I mean men, no offense women, you know, I know you have your own issues, <laughs> but next time you see a man, remember, all men are liars and the truth is not in them. And the reason why is a fascinating study into Genesis and the Garden of Eden. In Streams in the Desert, quit you like men and be strong. Do not pray for easy lies. Pray to be stronger men. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Then the doing of your work shall be no miracle, but you shall be a miracle of God's work in you. We must remember that it is not an easy or self-indulgent life that Jesus will lead us to greatness. The easy life leads not upward, but downward. Heaven always is above us, and we must ever be looking up towards it. There are some people who always avoid things that are costly or confrontational or that cause them uncomfortable feelings, that require self-denial or self-restraint and sacrifice. But toil and hardship show us the only way to nobleness. Greatness comes not only by having a mossy path made for you through the meadow, but by being sent to hew out a roadway by your own hands. Are you going to reach the mountain splendors? Are you going to go to the mountaintop? Would God use you to become great in his kingdom? The point that God makes in us is that through us he can reveal himself to us that we know often 
what we think we are. But then as God works out through us, we discover that who we are really isn't as wonderful as we think we are. But that God, when he involves himself in us, then he causes us to go along with him for the ride. And it's like we see his greatness in us and we're amazed at what he's doing through us. And then we want to give glory to God for what he has done. The same way that Jesus said he gave glory to his Father in heaven. So if you think you're something special because something wonderful is happening in your life or happening through your life, I think you better recognize who it is that gets the glory and who it is that gets the shame. Because God said, all men are liars and the truth is not in them. What kind of man are you? Have you put the truth on and recognized that the scriptures are true? That God be found faithful and every man a liar? Or are you stealing God's glory for your own personal gain? The fame that men and women seek often is a delusion because the reality of what God wants us to do is to humble ourselves and to recognize just how corrupt we really are and how magnificent he can be we let him be all he wants to be in us as opposed to letting us have our own way to be who we really are today I'm nobody special leave me alone without God and I'm just as much a sinner as you are and maybe worse but give me God give me Jesus alive in me give me the fullness of the Holy Spirit coming inside and I delight in my day and I rejoice in the way that he puts my footsteps ordered each and every day of my life and it's exciting to see what God will do sometimes through you and sometimes through me.